Leo, what your soul contracted to teach others. In this incarnation, you have come to teach your fellow beings how to accept love. People drawn to you are extremely aloof and have difficulty accepting too much affection or what they view as too much affection. They tend to feel that love is limiting, that love would hold them down. They find themselves continually detaching instead of learning that they can accept love and retain freedom simultaneously. You can help others learn this lesson in different ways. One way is to persevere, not taking no for an answer, and continuing to love and share love when you honestly feel it in your heart, whether those around you are remaining aloof or not. You can also share love through recognizing the good within others and teaching those around you to feel that they are worthy of accepting love and strong enough not to lose their own identity. Or you can be very demonstrative, jealous, and possessive where love is concerned, thereby showing those drawn into your life exactly what it is that they don't want. Yet this very process encourages the other person to look elsewhere for love that will allow them freedom. Your ability to teach others to lighten up and not take things so seriously can bring happiness into the lives that you touch, providing you don't take yourself too seriously. You tend to come into the lives of persons who need cheering up, who feel the everyday duties of life are too mundane for them to handle. Through your ability to find pleasure, you teach others to find it too. Those of you with this pattern, with this eclipse pattern, who choose not to accept your natural ability can teach others the value of happiness through being overly possessive and jealous. This causes people to break from you and find happiness by going their own way. When you don't understand what you're teaching, you can find yourself trapped in patterns of loneliness and self-pity. You can create a great deal of unhappiness and loneliness in your own life. Allow your glee and joyfulness to shine through, no matter how much negativity you draw to you. With your ability to spark creativity and love in others, you attract persons who are very down on themselves. Remain centered. Do not allow those around you to knock you off balance and change your way of looking at life. It is your duty to remain buoyant, teaching others to love the self. If you should find yourself trapped in a pattern of loneliness, you need only to bring romance into your life to feel that spark of love inside. And if those around you refuse to accept your gift, it is important that you share in another area. If you have chosen to stay in a relationship with a person who is unwilling to love themselves, you can share your love and creativity in many other areas. You can work with children or go into self-expressive fields, such as teaching, creative arts, acting, performing. There are many areas of life where you can express this wealth of creativity and color and your ability to stimulate others into rejoicing about the self. You do not have to remain in a morose pattern. If you do, it is self-inflicted. And you do not have the right to blame others since you have the strength and the ability to climb out. The Leo must let the child shine through. Your example allows others to see that we are all children in life's eyes. And our lessons do not always have to be so serious. As you allow the child energy to manifest, you also allow the creative force from within to flow. You can be extremely creative yourself 
and or you have the ability to spark creativity in those around you just by validating the child in all. When we are children, our imaginations are not tarnished and the worries and anxieties of everyday life are gone. And when our energy enters into another's life, the playfulness allows him or her to set aside their worries and to play. As you teach this to others, you find those around you becoming more creative when their true inner spark begins to burn. You are the true teachers of the Zodiac. In teaching those around you to lighten up and get in touch with their own creative source, you show them the goodness that lies within and empowers them to bring it forth. You have an innate ability to teach people to find their own self-worth and to move and motivate them to go forward into the world with their own natural abilities proudly shining. You can teach your lesson from a positive or a negative standpoint. You can share love, sensitivity, and recognition with those around you teaching them to become proud, creative, loving of self, and thereby able to share love. Or you can go through life invalidating others, taking credit for their creativity, and devaluing those who are close to you. In this way, you push others to the point of standing up for themselves and recognizing, hey, I'm worth more than this. Either way, the lesson of loving yourself, being proud of self, and letting the self shine is taught. If you have a lunar eclipse in Leo, you have come to learn how to accept love. In other times, perhaps soul memory, soul history, you played a very strong role in the humanities and developed a humanitarian type of consciousness. You loved on a more universal level, not taking time to feel the individual personal love or personal pride or self-worth. In this existence, you're learning to accept your own individuality, which includes developing some of the ego. Learning to be proud of the spark of the collective consciousness that you carry within and allowing your own individual spark to burn brightly to reflect the glory of the whole. You realize that in performing your individual best, you are truly honoring the oneness by shining your brightest. When connecting in a group consciousness, we honor one another by doing the best for each other that we possibly can. What motivates us to do this best is to develop the ego. The idea is to develop the ego without selfishness and yet at the same time with self-love. You are finding qualities within that you can feel proud of. You are to value the self and self-expression, but you must begin by learning to love the self. You're beginning to recognize that the self is worthy of being loved and that it is not a negative thing to accept love and to feel self-pride. Many are coming from such a universal consciousness that you think it is negative to care about the self or to develop your ego. You may lose sight of the fact that although we are all part of the whole, we are also individuals. You realize that we are all connected and that we must all help one another. Your difficulties lie in recognizing that you have a responsibility to make your individual spark, your individual self, as valuable to your fellow beings as possible. In teaching one another personal pride and self-love, we charge the battery that encourages us all to perform at our highest. Somehow you develop the spiritual misconception that your role is to be a doormat for society 
you feel that if you think too highly of yourself, you will be singling yourself out as being more important than the group. You need to learn in this lifetime that you can only be of use to the group when you feel good about yourself. We all perform best when we feel confident inside. You're discovering that to truly love all, you must first love self. You're learning to honor those things in your life that cause your individual spark to grow stronger, shine more brightly, and become as vibrant as it can possibly be. By recognizing your own self-worth, the flow of your creative energy, and your own special essence, you are adding to this plane by allowing the self to shine through. Those around you can benefit from your ability to inspire others to be more creative and more loving. Once you have found this space for yourself, you can be one of the most inspirational of teachers. When you finally recognize that it is all right to love the self, you have reached the point where you can accept love from others. Your lesson is to accept love into the self as well as learn to love the self. You tend to detach from loving situations, fearing that the involvement will be limiting. You need to realize that it is all right for love to remain a constant within your life. You do not have to be perfect first. You fear that if you are not perfect, you will hold back yourself or somebody else. So you may drive yourself to a state of perfection before you allow yourself or another to truly commit. During this lifetime, this thought process needs to be reevaluated and changed. Recognized that we are here to give support to one another by accepting love and supporting from each other. The support makes our journey easier, more loving, and more conscious. We are in our most comfortable, productive states when we allow ourselves to feel loved and be supported by those around us. Allowing yourself to benefit from this love and support and not isolate yourself with an unrealistic reality. There's three basic steps in allowing this love to enter your life. First, recognize that we are all separate entities within a whole. The separate divine spark within each of us needs to have support and love from other members of the whole. Second, realize that sharing and being loved are all right. They're not signs of weakness. They're natural. They're healthy human traits. This step leads directly to the other major lesson that you have come to learn. Procreation or individual creativity. You are learning that if you are to create anything worthwhile in this life, you must take in the love and support of those around you. Until your being is in total balance and harmony, you cannot connect with your truest creative forces, the forces of procreation. These have the power to create another entity, whether it be another human being, a painting, a book, or a garden. To allow the child of your creativity to develop properly, you must reach this level of awareness and accept love. Within this element of procreation and creativity, you are learning to let your own creative spark flow so that you can give back to life the beauty that you see. You can express this spark in art, in writing, in choosing to teach a child to learn and grow, or perhaps on the stage, sharing love, happiness, laughter, and drama with others. Because Leo rules the factor of procreation, you are in touch with the creative energy, the Christ consciousness, the God consciousness. You are also in touch with the possibility of losing your identity to those you serve. Just as actors and actresses often lose the privacy of their own lives by playing roles for the masses. In the past, you've dispersed your individuality into the whole so that now you have no recognition of your own individuality. Thus, you need to develop a conscious awareness that there is an individual spark so that this divine 
particle becomes validated. You may fear coming into the body and developing an ego within the body. The thought is, now I'll get caught up in this stream of life and really lose my identity. This fear unconsciously prevents you from coming into your own space. In actuality, once you begin to manifest your individuality, freedom, not entrapment, is the result. You may fear becoming an individual because more is expected of an individual. You don't know whether or not you can love, live up to it. You fear getting caught up in the responsibility of living up to your capabilities. And this is another lesson, not to concern yourself so much with the future outcome of the projection of ego, but to live in the integrity of the moment, doing what brings uplifting feelings and happiness to the spark within the individual self. In giving happiness to your own spark, yourself, your inner joy and sense of fulfillment will flood out and increase the quality of life for all those around you. In this lifetime, you are allowed to have happiness, joy, and love. It is your birthright. It is an individual duty for you to achieve this. It is the missing factor in your soul growth. You have repaid your debt to society many times over. And what is owed to your soul growth pattern in this existence is individuality, separate personal love and development. You want to become a creative force within the self because in honoring the one, you must procreate. And your job is to create through sharing the joy that is within yourself. This correlates directly to the lesson of learning to love the self. The creative energy is so strong within the Leo that if you don't develop your own individuality before your creativeness starts flowing, then others may recognize that spark before you do. And this can lead to others ruling your life, which is exactly what you fear.